I want to talk to you about um, weight gain, weight loss for women. And this is a big topic right now because we're using a lot of these drugs called GLP-1 agonists and GIP uh, agonists, semaglutide, drizepatide. And, you know, we're using that kind of in an episodic fashion to get the weight down. The medicines are kind of expensive. It's a shot you give yourself every week. What other things can you do to lose weight that really doesn't include diet and exercise? I think diet and exercise goes without saying that's that's the most important thing you can do. But what about um, other uh, interventions? So as we're seeing most commonly perimenopausal or postmenopausal women, and prior to 2002 or 2004, right around that time, we put pretty much all women on hormone replacement when they hit menopause. And there was a big study came out in 2002, 2004, it came out in two different years. Uh, there was probably the biggest disservice to women's health in history, and that was called the Women's Health Initiative Trial, where doctors mistakenly interpreted the results that suggested that HRT could cause women health problems. There was really nothing further from the truth. There was in this way they did this study that had a very slight increase of risk, but we found subsequently that women that went on hormone replacement therapy within 10 years of menopause had a much lower chance of dying in the next 10 or 20 years, particularly with cardiovascular disease. But what about weight? So let's talk about that. And these are not new studies. So I'm going to take some, these are some studies from the nineties that when we were, we were supporting using hormone replacement therapy for women to, to support a lot of things, such as reducing vasomotor symptoms, which are menopausal symptoms, support weight, prevent weight gain from happening quite as fast um, to help with mood, help with bones and help with longevity. Okay. So let's go through three studies here from the nineties. And these, some of these references are included in my book, testosterone strong enough for a man made for a woman. This is a 1999 Beneficial effect of hormone replacement therapy on weight loss in obese menopausal women. So, beneficial effect of hormone replacement therapy on obese on weight loss in obese women, menopausal women, 1999. And they used uh, hormone replacement therapy. And they found combined hormone replacement therapy not only prevented weight gain, but favored weight loss by significantly increasing lipid oxidation after three months of treatment. It favorably influenced insulin response and plasma lipids and energy expenditure. They did weight history, waist to hip ratio, weight, fat, visceral fat. And they found on average um, about six pounds of weight loss in three months with uh, hormone replacement therapy. Pretty also better glucose, uh, hemoglobin anyone seeing glucose levels. 1999. So we knew this back then. Again, we abandoned it. Study in Journal of American Medical Association, 1996. This is a study of 600. 70 women, age 65 to 94, in San Bernardino, Ranch Rancho Bernardino, um, hormone replacement therapy, whether used intermittently or continuously for 15 or more years, is not associated with the weight gain and central obesity that is commonly observed in postmenopausal women. Now, this study, you could say, well, how good of a study is it because they didn't have a control group? Well, 15-year study, there's not going to be a control group. So a control group would be your women that are observed that are not in hormone replacement therapy, but it's not going to be a double-blind placebo-controlled study, which is the gold standard. Um, you can't do that for 15 years. But this is an example where they looked at 671 women, 15-year prospective cross-sectional cohort study. This is a good study. And they showed that hormone replacement therapy used intermittently or continuously for 15 or more years is not associated with the weight gain and central obesity that is seen in postmenopausal women. Okay, favorable. Less heart attacks, less breast cancer, less weight gain, less obesity. Third study, 1998, effect of androgen replacement therapy, testosterone therapy for postmenopausal women. This is uh, 39 healthy postmenopausal women with increasing body weight were studied for six months. They did a DEXA scan, which is the most accurate way of determining whether or not you're losing fat or muscle mass or gaining fat or muscle mass. They found that uh, androgens are capable of reducing abdominal fat accumulations as well as total body weight in postmenopausal women with unexplained weight gain, gain. These studies are all predating the 2002 and 2004 Women's Health Initiative trial, where doctors more or less abandoned hormone replacement therapy for maybe about 10 years, which again was a big disservice to women. We know that women who are in menopause suffer from menopausal symptoms. Uh, hot flashes, night sweats, uh, fogginess, brain fog, weight gain, decreased bone mass, started getting increased rates of cancer, heart disease, neurocognitive decline. And between about 2002 and about 2015 or so, um, we pretty much were putting women in menopause on psychiatric drugs, treating menopause like a psychiatric disorder. And we could not have been further from the truth. Uh, hormone replacement therapy is not only safe, but it protects life. Our practice, we've been doing hormone replacement therapy during that entire time. And 
we were using the bioidentical hormone creams at first, which were working well. It was really hard to get enough testosterone into a woman through creams. So we switched over to the pellets, which are much more stable. So a testosterone pellet is about the size of a piece of rice. The estrogen pellet is about 1 20th that size. And then progesterone, which is another natural hormone, is taken orally. And the pellets go into your skin using the buttocks. They can go anywhere. You can put it where there's a scar in the abdomen from a C-section or, or a, a appendix scar. In the last about three months or so, they were seeing that testosterone has a very strong inhibitory effect on the development of breast cancer. That make it impossible. It reduces the rate by about 40 to 70% with or without estrogen. Studies with estrogen alone have not shown a strong favorability for uh, increased risk of breast cancer, actually reduced risk of breast cancer on estrogen only in the Women's Health Initiative trial. However, um, we know that testosterone should be kind of mind to reduce it substantially versus just a minor decrease. And both estrogen uh, taking somehow topically or transdermal or in a pellet and testosterone favor weight maintenance or in cases of somebody who's gained weight, weight loss. So I tell you, if you're using some glutide and lost some weight and you're, um, you should start exploring hormone replacement therapy to see if it's right for you, talk to your doctor about it. You can go to Allure Medical Books and you can download our book for free. You can buy it on Amazon, but you can download it for free. It's called Testosterone, Strong Enough for a Man, but Made for a Woman. And back around 2010 or so, I was using testosterone pellets by themselves because that does help solve all symptoms of menopause. And there was such a political fight or fear over using estrogen because of the misinterpretation by doctors and the public and the media about uh, the dangers of estrogen, which was misplaced estrogen only women that were perfectly fine. It was a drug called progestin that had some risk, which was really a drug, not a hormone. But doctors were spooked by using any hormone replacement therapy. They didn't really know what testosterone was for the most part for women. So, so they didn't discourage or patients from taking it. And then around the 2000 teens, we learned that estrogen is extremely, when I say extremely, like 40% reduction in, in cardiovascular events. So that's, I would still call that extreme since that's the number one killer of women still today. And it happens in menopause. But testosterone replacement therapy started within about 10 years of menopause, reduced the woman's risk of breast cancer, I'm sorry, of heart disease. We combine those together. We have the things that are remote, you know, heart disease, neurocognitive decline, breast cancer, might or might not happen, all negative. But then we have the immediate better protection of weight. Weight loss favors weight loss if you gain weight, or favors weight protection if you're just worried about that happening. And I think this should be part of your overall health. These drugs, uh, semaglutide, intrazepatide, which are known as Wagovi, Ozempic, Zepbound, and, and Majuro, they're all very healthy drugs. We're seeing more and more benefits from them. I'm not downplaying those at all. We use them regularly. Very happy with them. But I always ask, what else can we do to help people live your healthier life? And there's obviously lifestyle intervention. And quite frankly, pharmacology is part of it. And as we think about living longer lives, um, there's sometimes pride in not taking any medications at all. But once things happen, you get metabolically unsound, such as an obesity or being overweight. Drugs do prolong life. You go through menopause or males and men andropause. We're talking about menopause here. Uh, that menopause starts the aging clock much faster, where things such as heart disease, cancer, neurocognitive decline, weight gain come on at a much faster rate. We can really attenuate those. We're going to see a society that's going to live well past the current projection of 80 if you're, say, a 50 or 60 year old woman. And I think pharmacology is something to accept that that is part of it. Your ovaries are kind of tired, they're poofed out, they're no longer making the hormones, and you can take them exogenously, they can be taken as a pellet. And um, I'm really a big proponent of weight maintenance. We know that if you look at lifespan, the predictors are going to be, you know, your lean muscle mass as a percentage of your body weight. There's a lot of times there's a misunderstanding thinking that it's total lean muscle mass or total lean body weight. Now, I hear that a lot in the popular media, media but that's not correct. Um, a small person can live a long time as well as a big person, but it's your percentage of lean mass to total weight. And lean mass is not just your muscles and your bones, it's your organs and your blood vessels and your circulation. We have skeletal muscle mass, which is our bone skeletal muscles, which would be everything besides the heart. And then we have lean muscle mass, and then we have fat. And that's really your three compartments. Lean mass includes skeletal muscle mass. And testosterone therapy, replacement therapy promotes lean mass. Estrogen replacement therapy promotes lean mass. And these are something that um, you know we've written about, blogged about, podcasts about, and I'm going to be continuously trying to get the message out. And I see a shift in doctors' opinions or attitudes towards HRT. They were afraid of them. Doctors in their 50s and 60s, maybe in 70s, are afraid of HRT because they were told by CNN and Fox News they shouldn't be using them. Nothing could be further from the truth. We should not be taking our medical advice from from media, but we did as a society. There's a big study called the AWARE trial, A-W-A-R-E trial, and they found that um, 
based on the Women's Health Initiative trial in 2002, 2004, the majority of women went off their HRT because of how they perceived the information. And the information was actually trying to show something else other than if you start menopausal medicines within 10 years of menopause. They did not, that was not the group of people that had an issue. So HRT, um, I want you to learn about it a little bit more. You can again read my book. I encourage you to get a free copy of that. Talk to your doctor about it. And thank you very much. 